How does Google's pride and joy stack up against the best Sony mobile experience? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Sony Xperia Z versus the Google Nexus 4. The Nexus 4, a collaboration between Google and LG for the most pure Android experience. And the Sony Xperia Z, the same for Sony, the best of what Sony has to offer, all packaged into a smartphone. Two very similar concepts with vastly different outcomes. These two devices are true behemoths. They are currently two of the most desirable smartphones on the market. They have a lot in common and they also have a lot of differences. But when these two flagships go toe to toe, the purest Android experience and the best Sony experience, which one comes out on top? It all depends on where your priorities lie. One area these two devices truly differ is in build quality and design. The Xperia Z is a very squared device with hard edges that make it feel much more substantial and larger in the hand, but it also makes it more difficult to hold and it doesn't feel as comfortable. Around the edges of the device, it has a blue trim, which gives it a much more premium feel and look. It's distinguishing and it's rather unique. But once you get around to the right edge, there is a big, bright power button that you cannot miss. The Nexus 4, on the other hand, is a much more comfortable device to hold. It's tapered around the edges, which gives it the illusion of being smaller in the hand than it actually is. It also has a rubberized trim around the backside of the edge, which makes it easier to hold onto and doesn't give the feeling that the device could slip through your fingers at any minute. The Nexus 4 and the Xperia Z both feature glass panels on the front and back of the devices. However, the Nexus 4 has Gorilla Glass only on the front, the rear is not. And the Xperia Z has Dragon Trail Glass on the front and Gorilla Glass on the rear. The Xperia Z is much more resistant to the elements as it has both IP55 and IP57 ratings for dust and waterproofing. Unfortunately, that means that all of the device's ports are under covers. If you need to plug your device in, even listen to music, or change your SD card, you're gonna have to lift a cover first before you can access those ports. Although the buttons are placed rather strangely and the ports aren't nearly as accessible on the Xperia Z as they are on the Nexus 4, the Xperia Z has the upper hand at the end of the day. It has waterproofing, dustproofing, and an overall more premium feel. Both the Nexus 4 and the Xperia Z have a 1.5 GHz quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro chipset, 2 GB of RAM, and 16 GB of built-in storage, although the Nexus 4 also comes in an 8 GB model. And that's where the specification similarities end. The Xperia Z has the advantage in pretty much all of the other specifications. It has a 5 inch 1080p reality display, a 13.1 megapixel camera, a micro SD card slot, and a 2300 milliamp hour battery. It also has your typical connectivity, such as NFC, Wi Fi BGN, Bluetooth 4.0, etc. It also has LTE connectivity, depending on where you are, and also works on AT&T 3G bands here in the States. The Nexus 4 has a 4.7 inch WXGA True HD IPS Plus display, an 8 megapixel camera, a 2100 milliamp hour battery, and no option for expandable storage. It also has NFC, Bluetooth 4.0, and Wi-Fi BGN. A major plus for the Nexus 4 and a big miss for the Xperia Z is wireless charging. The Nexus 4 adheres to the Qi wireless standard, meaning it's compatible with any of the Qi wireless chargers. The Xperia Z, however, does not have wireless built in, and you instead have to buy a case that uses the metal prongs on the side of the device. This means you have to use the Xperia Z in a case if you ever want to charge wirelessly and not have to open the covers over all the ports. When you consider those specifications, there's only one area where the Xperia Z truly blows the Nexus 4 out of the water, and that's the display. The Xperia Z has a 5-inch display with a pixel resolution of 1920 by 1080 That's roughly 443 pixels per inch. When you compare that to the 4.7 inch 1280 by 768 pixels or a rating of 318 pixels per inch on the Nexus 4, the difference is considerable. But the comparison between these two displays is not just based on density. When you're watching videos or looking at pictures, the Xperia Z's display uses the Sony Mobile Bravia Engine 2, which makes colors pop a little more and it makes it much more vibrant. In normal use, the Xperia Z's display pops much more than the Nexus 4, However, the contrast ratio of Sony's display is not nearly as high as the Nexus 4's contrast. Blacks are not nearly as dark or as inky on the Xperia Z as they are on the Nexus 4. So it's kind of a trade-off. Do you want extremely high resolution with colors that really pop with low contrast, or do you want a display that's relatively vivid, high contrast, and a much lower density? The true Achilles heel of the 1080p display on the Xperia Z is how much power it consumes. Laying both devices side by side on the table with the displays turned at full brightness, the Xperia Z drains much more quickly. Fortunately, all those pixels don't come at the expense of performance. 
Both the Nexus 4 and the Xperia Z share the same S4 Pro chipset at the same clock speed, 1.5 GHz. And in normal use, both devices perform quite well. And it was quickly evident that the Xperia Z eats benchmarks for breakfast. In the Quadrant Standard benchmark, it scored a 7883 versus the 4836 from the Nexus 4. In the SunSpider test, it also scored lower, which is better, than the Nexus 4. And using the Antutu benchmark, the Xperia Z blew the Nexus 4 out of the water once again. But time and time again, we learned that benchmarks mean very little when real-world performance suffers. The Nexus 4 falls victim to very few performance bugs in normal usage, whereas the Xperia Z suffered the occasional stuttering on the home screen, pulling down the notification shade, switching between applications, and so on and so forth. While there are major differences in the hardware, how does the software stack up? Let's take a look. Unsurprisingly, the area where these two devices have more in common than any other category is software. Although the Xperia Z runs Sony's customized version of Android, the software on both devices is very similar. Customizations made by Sony in its software is not nearly as overbearing or prevalent as other manufacturers' customized interfaces. Sony's interface allows the user to set a theme. Those themes apply different accent colors throughout the operating system, so if the hollow blue on stock Android isn't your thing, you could try an amethyst, a ruby, amber, or emerald, maybe a sapphire. You also have settings toggles in the notification shade, which largely differ from the quick settings in Android. The icons are very Sony-esque. If you've used a Sony television or even a PlayStation 3, you'll notice that these icons look kind of familiar. The application drawer is a little different as well. The settings application, while mostly stock, has been changed to adhere to Sony's themes and accent colors. And there are other tiny little modifications all throughout the system. For instance, Sony's customizations comes with its own set of widgets and wallpapers, and there is some bloatware. The good news is this bloatware can be removed quite easily. Aside from these minor differences in a customized lock screen on the Xperia Z, the software on both of these devices feels very similar. Sony has left many cues from the stock Android experience in its own customized software, and of all the interfaces out there, TouchWiz, SenseUI, this one is among the most lightweight. In the Jelly Bean update, Google introduced a new camera interface, one that's more user-friendly and quick to use. Simply tap anywhere in the viewfinder and slide your finger towards the outside of the ring to access your quick settings. However, the camera experience on the Xperia Z packs more features, such as intelligent auto settings and filters for various effects. And when you compare the output of those two cameras, the 13.1 megapixel camera on the Xperia Z is definitely the clear winner. Pictures tend to come out more crisp and clear with more vibrant colors, whereas the Nexus 4 tends to lack proper detail and color reproduction. All in all, the Nexus 4 and the Xperia Z are marketed towards two totally different types of consumers. The Nexus 4 is geared more towards consumers who want a stable and consistent experience on the cheap. The Nexus 4 retails for either $299 or $349 depending on capacity and is an absolute bargain. But without LTE and a mediocre camera, it was never the top in its class. The Xperia Z, however, is as premium as it can get. It has an excessively high resolution display, a 13.1 megapixel camera, waterproofing, dustproofing, LTE connectivity, a micro SD card slot, but that comes at a rather steep price at upwards of 800 US dollars. If you're looking for a more modest phone that's easier to manage one-handed and comes with the most pure Android experience, Nexus 4 is definitely the device for you. But if you're looking for something a little better for watching movies or playing games, something with raw power, a premium device all around, of these two, Sony's flagship smartphone is probably the one you should be eyeing. So that wraps up the comparison between the Xperia Z and the Nexus 4. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us on your favorite social networks, Google Plus at Plus Pocket Now, Twitter at Pocket Now Tweets, and Facebook at Facebook.com slash Pocket Now. Also, be sure to stay tuned for the full Xperia Z review in the coming days. I'm Taylor Martin, and I will see you next time.